Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, we want to thank God and welcome everybody back to the program today. And I do appreciate the Lord, children, for this privilege of being with you. And I hope you've been with us in our last programs. I've been teaching on the, especially the second coming of the Lord and what kind of appearance it's going to be because there's a lot of teaching on the coming of the Lord, but now whether it's being put into place as the Word of God teaches, that's where you and me are going to have to really study to be approved of God. And today we thank God and appreciate all of our listeners, especially send it out to you in the hospitals and nursing homes. And we want to invite you now to come out sometime be with us. We have our church service Wednesdays and Saturday nights at 7 o'clock. And on Sundays we have our service at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And we do thank God, children. And we have our website if you'd like to Get on it. We've got some good articles and hopefully we'll get it built up pretty soon. But we do appreciate the Lord. And I'm going to go ahead and get right into the Word of God. And if you was with me now, I've been teaching on what Jude said and also Paul in his writing in the book of 2 Thessalonians said that the Lord comes in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel. And we need to realize now Jesus tore down the middle wall by giving his life on that cross. He tore down the differences between the Jew and Gentile. And we know now blindness was up on Israel for a time, but now if they'll turn to the Lord, that veil can be taken away because the Bible said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty in children. God help us, Paul was a Hebrew. And he knew that Jesus died for them. But now, there's no reason that any of us can't be saved if we'll turn to the Lord. Because the Bible said, I would all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And this is what we're speaking on because Jesus came back to earth and he's on earth now in his people and he's come to save and to redeem us. And we need to really keep ourselves under subjection because we don't none know what our, our Lord's are coming. But now today, I'm going to be continuing. Then I want to show you what Revelation said about it. In the book of 2 Thessalonians, in verse 9, it said, even him, speaking of Jesus, or let me just start back at verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So what's going to happen when the Lord comes? That's when he'll destroy the man of sin. And the Bible said, even him, that's Jesus, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them, not the elect now, in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And that's why while the gospel is here in freedom of, of receiving, we ought to be grabbing it with everything in us, children. And it don't hurt you to go home and study after the pastors and teachers and see if they're teaching us right. But nevertheless, the Bible said, and for this cause, because if we don't receive the love of the truth, the Bible said God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And that's going on. But we are bound to give thanks our way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Watch this. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation, how? Through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. That's the only way God calls us. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul said, therefore, brethren, stand fast. Don't get shaken. Hold the traditions which you've been taught, whether by word or, or our epistle. That means if it's according to the word. 
Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope through the grace, comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. Now children, the Lord will keep us. But you need to understand by the Bible that there is no teaching anywhere from Genesis to Revelation where that we're going to be taken out of here before the man of sin. We are not going to see that happen. Now some may die and go on and be with the Lord, but as far as the church as a whole, Paul said, don't let no man, don't let no man deceive you by any means. See? There had to come a falling away first and the man of sin revealed and all of that's building up now. Now, let me take you back to Revelation where I started to get on yet a last program. Revelation 16, let me read you something here. And this is a time the plagues is being poured out and I'm showing you the church is not gone. Now children, a lot of these has already happened but people's blinded to it because of our leaders. Listen to this 16th chapter of the book of Revelation. Read the whole chapter, but I'm going to start at verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth under the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now listen to verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. That's Jesus speaking. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Now who is he talking about here? Honey, as God is my helper, he's talking about the church here. We're facing these hours of great tribulations. But now, God will always watch over his people. But study the Bible, even the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation. That deadly wound of that beast has to be healed and all the world wonders after it and it makes war with the saints and some are overcame. Now, Read Revelation 6. There was a question asked in Revelation chapter 6. Let me just show it to you. Out of Revelation chapter 6, it takes a lot of time to do this, but let me just read you something. Because this is the time, I believe it is, of the sixth seal. Watch this. Now, I'm running you all over because I'm mostly getting on the coming of the Lord, but I'm just showing you He can't come until after the tribulation. I know the world's got it different, but that's not the problems of the Bible. That's their problem. They'll meet God for that. And what they've taught people, judgment will face them. But listen to verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, Revelation 6, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge your blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now watch verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So you see, children, there's always been suffering among God's people. Even at the time God brought them out of Egypt. Well, he sent the plagues, didn't he? But the plagues didn't touch the people of God. 
They hadn't got out of here. He was bringing them out of that bondage. See? And children, all through the Bible, the church has faced the tribulation hours. And it ain't going to be no different now. And what did Jesus say? Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keeps his garments. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And then the seventh angel poured out its vow. So see, the church hadn't went nowhere. The church is the one Jesus is talking to. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keeps his garment lest he walk naked. And they, that's that beast force, they see his shame. Come on. We ain't going nowhere. I mean, it'd be nice, but if you can't read it, there ain't no need to be lying to us. Now, go to Revelation 7. We're just going to bring some of these things out about this hour. Listen to it. Revelation 12, verse 9. Because verse 1 of chapter 7 through verse 9 is the 144,000 of the tribes of Jacob, and they're already with Jesus now, following that lamb on Mount Zion. Now, go to verse 9. After this, after the sealing of the 144,000, I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, peoples, and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sits upon the throne and under the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, watch this, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped, saying, Amen, blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Listen to verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, to John, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, washed the robes, made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth upon the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them any more. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and thank God lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, the question was, what are these that are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And John didn't know, he said, so he said to the elders, Sir, thou knowest. And he said, These that are, are they that came out of great tribulation. Come out of it. Children, you're facing that hour. Now, go to Revelation 15. I want you to listen to this. Revelation 15 and verse 1. The whole Bible tells you about it, these things. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. Now watch this. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, over his name, number of his name, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Did John say, I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. So children, don't be deceived. We're facing this hour of the great tribulation. But now God has always been faithful to his children. And I want you, when you get time to study, there is no Bible where he's going to sneak in here and not tell anybody. See, they're teaching it. You may be in a plane flying, and all of a sudden, 
Pilate's gone, you're left, or the people, some of them gone, some of you here. All of this, you're driving down a road.